Hello everyone, it's VGTI here with more Let's Play and Analyze Portal. When we last left off, we found out this. The cake is a lie. So, what does this mean? Obviously a lot of you guys have heard about the cake is a lie. I'm sure a lot of you have heard this on the internet. Even if you've never played Portal, I'm sure you've heard the phrase, the cake is a lie. It became very uh, infamous after this game came out. Actually, a lot of things did. Portal just kind of kickstarted a lot of internet memes, and that was one of them. Um, so the cake is a lie. As we know, you're supposed to get cake upon completion of the test. And, and Greek counseling. Apparently the Greek counseling is not a lie, but the cake is. Now, this is a little side area. You're not supposed to be able to go into it, but for whatever reason, it's open and you can enter it. So what does this mean? There's help written here in what appears to be blood, but maybe isn't. And there's also a handprint on the wall. Then we see help again, and aside from the cake is a lie, there's also all kinds of other graffiti. There's tally marks to mark the days that have gone by, supposedly. Cake posters to show the cake that is indeed a lie. There's pictures of the turrets saying, hello, can I help you? Boxes dropping on them. Uh, aperture posters. Stuff like that. And I believe this is actually supposed to be the uh, cameras. Or rather, it's a picture, a drawing of the cameras. So, who did this? This, this is the work of Doug Ratman. Back when this game came out, we didn't know who Ratman was. But that was just kind of the theory going around, was that these could be written by Doug Ratman, and further evidence of this was provided on this website that was created for Portal. Uh, I forget the name of it now, but there was one that provided some hints. There were some theories that this wasn't written by Doug Ratman, but was actually written by Chell when she died. There were theories that Chell was actually cloned and that she could just keep respawning again and again every time she died and just keep redoing the test chambers and that these marks of graffiti are actually from her past self. It was an interesting theory, but we now know who did it uh, as Doug Ratman has become an established part of Portal War and he is an actual person. So we do know that now. And we know that he's been here. If you go back here, he's set up a nice little home for himself over here. We have little cans of beans, uh, milk, water, old computer consoles, uh, and a bucket for, well, probably you know what. So he's got a nice little home set up back here. And he was just kind of hiding out over here. Apparently, he knows that the cake is a lie. Can we take his word on that? Well, as I'm sure you know, the cake is indeed a lie. But not in the way you expect. You guys will see what I mean later. Uh, I'm going to get more into Ratman later, but that's just kind of a background on him. There's a lot of theories behind him. I'm going to give my own personal ones as we get further through this game and Portal 2. Uh, I've even discussed some of this in the comments, and some of you have recommended that I do a theory video about Doug Ratman from Portal. So I'm probably going to do that here in the future. But, for now, we are going to continue this chest chamber. It's pretty simple, but you have to be careful, because if you're not, you can die from carelessness those turrets shoot you too long, you'll die. But you have to show yourself to them because uh, you have to be able to shoot a portal at things. So, 
Let's, uh, oh, hey. Let's do that. They can even kill you when they fall over, so you have to be very careful. Here's another radio. This is another instance in the game where we see the radio. There won't be a whole bunch of instances after this, but it's there. Radios serve a little more of an important purpose in Portal 2, because you can actually find some secrets, some very interesting secrets in that game with the radios. I'll go into that more when I play Portal 2, uh, which I'm not sure if I'll do right after I beat this game, or if I'll do a let's play and analyze of a different game first. I'm not sure yet. We'll see. But just kind of keep that in mind. Yeah, radios are pretty important in the second game. Let's take you. Oh. I'm not super careful about this. I need to take my own advice. Okay. And then there's one up there. Just need to fire a portal up there. And drop down. Technically, you could dispose of it any way you want to, but that's the way I like to do it when there's less of them. Hey, GLaDOS. It's been a while since we've heard your voice. Okay, so we're almost done with this test chamber. And then I'll do the next one, I think. Or maybe a little bit of the next one. I'm trying to keep an eye on the time here for you guys. Uh, but now that we're into the point of the game where things are getting deeper, and more analysis heavy. I'm going to be spending more time on each test chamber. And they're longer to boot, so... It's quite an interesting combo. Okay, listen to GLaDOS here. Well done, Android. The Enrichment Center once again reminds you that Android Hell is a real place where you will be sent at the first sign of defiance. Now that comment there is exactly what I'm talking about with GLaDOS and how you're not really sure what's a lie and what's the truth. That comment there spawned a lot of theories as well uh, about Shell and if she's actually an android. Yes, that was a theory at one point in time, and some even still believe in the theory. I don't believe in it anymore, but it was rather convincing when this was the only thing that was out at the time. It's just, you know, GLaDOS, you're never sure with her, and she said that this course was designed for military androids, so it should make sense that she would call you an android. Some people said that that's a pre-recorded message for androids who do the course, and that she's not actually calling Shell an android. But some people don't believe that. They think that she's actually hinting at something. What do you guys think about that? It's another little brief detail about Shell. There's all kinds of theories about her, but a lot of them have kind of sunken down with the release of Portal 2 and some other supplementary material. It's still interesting nonetheless, though. So now we're gonna go to test chamber, what is it, 17? Yeah, 17. I think I can give this another good four or five minutes. And if you guys just heard that noise, that was my phone, so I apologize. <laughs> Forgot to put that on silent before I started. I am a professional video maker. And will deliver a weighted companion cube in three, two, one. Dun dun dun! It's the companion cube! This is another big source of internet memes. This weighted companion oh. cube will accompany you through the test chamber. Please take care of it. So as you can see, this is the weighted companion cube. It's obviously way better than a normal cube in pretty much every way imaginable. All because it has a heart on it. It is your friend. You have to take very good care of it. Uh, do not get rid of it. As you can see by this image, it's basically your best friend and your love. You should treat it as such. 
So, all you have to do here is go up here. I remember this puzzle stumping me back when I first played this. I was like, what? Uh, maybe 15, no, 14 years old, I think. Actually, maybe even younger, but... I remember that stumping me for some reason. I couldn't figure it out. It was one of the most idiotic moments of my playing this game. So this part's a little tricky. You have to use the companion cube to deflect the energy ball. You have to be very careful, because it can ricochet and kill you. Oops. Here we go. The symptoms most commonly produced by enrichment center testing are superstition, perceiving inanimate objects as alive, and hallucinations. The enrichment center reminds you that the weighted companion cube will never threaten to stab you and, in fact, cannot speak. That comment was actually very important, and people didn't realize at the time because we didn't have any material on Doug Ratman, but now that we do, all the stuff that she just said about the weighted companion cube actually makes a lot more sense that she's warning about it because these are all the symptoms that Ratman had when he was going around in the facility after everyone died and he was starting to succumb to, I guess you could say, a certain form of psychosis. He was starting to hallucinate. He was starting to hear the companion cube talking to him. Stuff like that. He was perceiving inanimate objects as alive as well. Uh, again, that's something we'll, we'll uh, go more into later, but... It's interesting to note that those are, like, the exact symptoms that he had. We should be safe from the energy bills now. Okay. So from here, we have multiple things that we need to do. But before we go on to the puzzle, uh, well, you know what, actually, let's do a little bit of the puzzle, and then I know where I'm going to end it off for you guys. We need to put a portal there, and put a portal right here, and then we just wait for the energy ball to fly up, like so. And that's taken care of. We're going to go back here now. <laughs> Now, Ratman's dens are starting to become a very widespread occurrence at this point. We found one in the last test chamber, we found one in this one, and we're going to keep finding them in the next two test chambers. Uh, quite an abundance of them, in fact. But this is Ratman Den number two. I'm going to end it off here, and in the start of the next video, we will talk more about all of this crazy stuff here. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed, guys. Leave your thoughts in the comments, your theories, stuff you want to recommend to me, tips about this series, or games you may want to see me play. You know, just spill out your thoughts, and I will try my best to respond. Thank you very much for watching, guys. If you liked the video, uh, then please like the video or go about your business. And if you like my channel and want to see more stuff like this and theory videos as well, uh, please feel free to subscribe to it. I really appreciate it. And yeah, we're going to have lots of fun on here. Thanks, guys.